How many triangles can Game Maker render? It depends entirely on your hardware and what kind of frame rate you want to target. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Ed. All right, fine. How many triangles is a question that gets asked constantly by people in the world of Game Maker 3D. And to be fair to them, I think most of the time when people are asking that, they kind of already know what I just said. And what they really want to know is more of what is your personal record for how many triangles Game Maker can render. And well, for one, the upper bound of what you can do is usually higher than you think. And two, that depends an awful lot on how complex your shader is. So I've designed a project with a few different kinds of tests in it. I'm hesitant to call it a benchmark because it's not really testing different kinds of computing tasks. It's not really as comprehensive as a real benchmark test would be. And you're looking at it. It's a set of randomly generated terrain. And the goal is to see what kind of frame rate we can get out of it. And this is mostly a, a non-serious just for fun video because I don't have anything else prepared for today. But hopefully we can also learn something while we're here. So this current test is running on Windows. The graphics card it's running on is the GTX 1060, which was until about a week ago the unrivaled king of the Steam hardware survey. And as you can see, it's holding a steady 60 FPS with a terrain model that contains about 2 million triangles. So if I have a look inside this demo real quick, uh, that entire terrain is being drawn in a single draw call. Um, if I look inside the step event, we are setting the, cam setting the camera projections, we are setting a few shader lighting uniforms, and uh, then we are drawing the um, the vertex buffer containing the terrain, and the vertex buffer containing the terrain just happens to be a single model, um, a single uh, terrain model. It's 1024 by 1024 squares. Each square contains two triangles. Uh, that is 1 million squares and 2 million triangles. There's actually two versions of this terrain because I have a second uh, configuration, uh, which is a uh, simplified version of the terrain, which is still the same size, but it doesn't contain any like normal or texture or anything data like that. And if I were to run it, all you would see would be white pixels outputted to where the, uh, the triangles are. And the reason that I have that is because I also want to run this on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I have not actually done this so far while testing this. So this is going to be, be a bit of a learning experience for both of us. And uh, we are going to see the same uh, the same terrain, the exact same terrain that the GTX 1060 is able to handle without uh, without even breaking a sweat. We're going to see exactly what that does to a piece of $40 uh, computing equipment from 2019. And the exact same setup on a Raspberry Pi appears to be getting between 7 and 8 frames per second, which is honestly better than I expected it would be. So it's worth remembering that these demos aren't perfectly ideal for testing like how many, just how many triangles you can squeeze out of a uh, computer. But I'll save that for the end. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to end that Raspberry Pi demo. I'm going to come back to uh, come back to Game Maker for a moment, and I'm going to swap over to the simple shader version. Uh, if you want to see the actual shaders, uh, they're uh, pretty straightforward. They have some some directional lights. Uh, they are calculating the basically the uh, diffuse color from the texture and the vertex color, multiplying that by the light color to get the the final output color, and then setting that to geofrag color. Uh, the simple shader is a lot less complicated. It has no normals, no color, no vertex position. It's just a uh, 3D position in space. Uh, send that over to the fragment shader. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, final color is just a vector 4 for white. So this is a lot easier to compute. And if I were to run the simple shader version of this demo on the Raspberry Pi, uh, we are probably going to start uh, seeing somewhat closer to something that might be called a playable frame rate. But in return, our game is going to be not very interesting at all. And uh, this might be just a tiny bit of an unrealistic expectation when it comes to how well your game is going to do. So the game has started and we have approximately doubled our frame rate from seven to eight to 15 to 16 on the Raspberry Pi, just by getting rid of all the interesting information from the terrain uh, when we're drawing it. This may not be super useful in an actual game because it's a little bit hard to see what is actually going on around us when everything is unlit like this and otherwise uncolored. But hey, I said we were going to have some silly fun today, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So, I can end that demo. I can probably turn off my uh, my um, game capture for the Raspberry Pi right now, because I'm done with it. And going back over to Windows, uh, you may have noticed the two large terrain configs in this project. And I am uh, actually going to have to re-add those files. Um, to the uh, to the project because I actually removed those before I started just so that they wouldn't it wouldn't take like 
uh, five or ten whole minutes to um to run the demo uh, because the game would have had to have uh, transmitted all of those data files over the um over the network to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so this next terrain that I'm going to run is approximately 25 times larger. It's actually a little more than 25 times larger. Uh, the terrain size is going to be 5400 by 5400. And again, that is going to be um, two triangles per, uh, per unit in the terrain, which is gonna come out to a little under, I think 60 million triangles. So I'm going to run this on not Ubuntu Raspberry. Uh, I'm going to run this on Windows. And this is going to take a moment to run. And it's going to uh, take take a minute to... Oh, did it not? All right, that was actually fast. Uh, usually it takes a, a bit longer to uh, write those data files to the, uh, to the game that it's running. And you can see that this is actually kind of sort of streaming in uh, slowly. And it's taken its, it's taken its jolly old time as we do that. And we are... Uh, we're going to wait for the entire terrain to finish to finish populating the screen. And some of them are going a little faster than others. And we'll wait for that last corner. And we are getting all of one one plus FPS. I'm gonna say in some in some uh, circumstances, on some frames we're actually getting less than one FPS. Um, and game maker's FPS counter just won't go lower than that. But we're getting about one FPS is what we're gonna say. All right, that's super cool. Uh, this is extremely playable on my GTX 1060. Now, a significant part of the slowdown that you're seeing here comes from the fact that the full-size terrain model takes up about six gigabytes of storage space. And because all the vertex buffers in this example are frozen because under ideal conditions, those are much faster to draw. That means this has to be six gigabytes of VRAM. And my graphics card only has three gigabytes of VRAM. And so to make the whole thing work, the system has to dip into shared video memory, which is if you don't know what that is, it's basically the GPU's version of a uh, swap space. It's a lot slower. And that's by no means the only source of slowdown in this example. The fact that we're trying to crunch 60 million triangles per frame is also a uh, not a fact to be ignored. If you were to run this example on something such as, for instance, an RX 580, which has similar overall like levels of raw computing power inside it uh, to the GTX 1060, but has much more VRAM, I want to say the 580 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, then you would see a noticeable performance gain in this project because the system wouldn't have to constantly go back and forth between regular VRAM and shared VRAM, which obviously that would be a lot faster. And I did not plan for this in this video, but as I'm making it, I realized that I probably should have, so I'll stick it on at the end. If you want to see how a triangle count like this performs in an example which does not completely blow out the amount of VRAM that we have available to us, uh, stick around to the end of the video, we will find out. And if I were to uh, take the take the opportunity to end the game. And it took an entire second for the game to close there, to register the close button after I clicked it. Um, let's see, uh, once more, I'm going to move the, um, the simple terrain into the game's project files. And uh, let's move so that I don't have to to build the entire game with all that again. Let's move the large terrain out. And I'm going to run this with the uh, large terrain simple shader uh, config. And that is going to give us the, uh, the 60 million triangle version of the terrain, but with the simplified shader. Uh, we are going to run this and we are going to see how much nicer this is on my GTX 1060. All right, it's loading in quite a bit faster. Once again, this is the exact same number of triangles as before. This is a bit of an extreme case, uh, but we have, uh, quintupled our frame rate by doing nothing but getting rid of all the interesting visual information about it. And um, honestly, at the end of the day, this might as well not be 60 million triangles. This might as well be maybe probably um, one to 200 hey. for all the detail that we can make out about it. But I never promised that this was a shader that would be practical to use in any actual game. So I think the, uh, I think the point has more or less been communicated my personal record for the uh, most triangles that I've ever rendered to Game Maker at like in one frame at um, 60 frames per second is actually a bit higher than this. I want to say that I've done uh, a little bit closer to probably uh, maybe a hundred million triangles in in one frame in Game Maker, 
But for one, the conditions I was doing that under were very different than what we're seeing here. Uh, the viewport that I was rendering through was a lot smaller. I want to say this, uh, what we're looking through right now is, um, what are we, uh, 1280 by 720? 1366, 768. Um, is our viewport size here and the uh, the viewport that I was rendering that through was a lot smaller So there were a lot fewer pixels to few to fill even with the same number of triangles and they were arranged differently and OBS just straight up crashed on me, which is maybe a sign that I maybe shouldn't have that demo Just on my screen at all times con consuming system resources um, among other things there is a concept called overdraw uh, when you're drawing things to the screen and Ordinarily in 2D Game Maker, uh, people tell you to render things from distance or farthest away from the camera to closest to the camera, and that's where the whole depth equals negative y things come from, and that will ensure that things that are, um, because you don't have the depth buffer in ordinary 2D Game Maker, at least most people don't turn it on anyway. Um, if you want something to, to appear behind something else, you have to draw it first, and that works in regular 2D Game Maker when you're not trying to make your GPU cry, but in the world of 3D, when you do have the depth buffer turned on, you... Uh, don't want to fill the same pixel on the screen multiple times if you don't have to. And if you draw something that is closer to the screen first before something that is farther away from the screen, early depth testing will kick in and the uh, the pixel will not be resolved the second time because it's um, because it's already been filled by something that is closer than it to the screen. But if you do it from uh, from back to front, then you have to process that pixel again, and it is a little bit of a waste. And this this demo project here uh, with all the triangles is doing none of that. Uh, this is doing nothing to minimize overdraw. We are simply loading in the vertex buffers in the order that we received them. Oh, right. I, uh, I had them loaded in the async event. These are compressed, by the way, so that this whole project doesn't like 12 gigabytes on the disk. Anyway, um, in real games, there's other tricks you would probably want to use to actually uh, reduce the number of triangles that are being drawn here. Uh, you would almost certainly, if this was a real game, want to use something along the lines of a level of detail model, which would... Um, dramatically reduce the number of triangles in the terrain that is farther away from the camera, as you saw when it was loading in. Uh, this whole thing is rendered in chunks, and the chunks that are far from the camera really don't need nearly as much detail as the chunks that are close to the camera. Uh, in the terrain editor that I used to make this, that is the trick that is used to, um, that's the main trick I used to make the terrain editor itself run at 60 frames per second. And in fact, um, if you want to see that, I guess I can open it up right now. All right, here we go. Let's create ourselves a new terrain. And that is going to be very big. I suppose I might as well generate noise also just for fun so that it looks like something. All right, I didn't like the first kind of noise that it generated, so I did it again a few times. If I were to fly around uh, with the 3D camera, you actually would be able to see, um, if you look real closely, the, uh, the level of detail changing as you get closer and farther away from the camera. And uh, obviously having the, uh, the view distance being all the way out is going to have a bit of a performance hit. Uh, the um, editor here with all this terrain is only getting about 30 FPS um, in this case um, with the maximum like with the maximum view distance. And if I were to shrink it down, uh, it is very hard to actually tell the difference uh, for anything that is, that is that far away from the camera, but editor performance is dramatically uh, improved by uh, simply using a, a LOD system to reduce the number of triangles rendered. And uh, you can very easily uh, trick trick your average non-critical eye into thinking that there is a lot more detail in things that there is in this way. I have um, made several videos on 3D optimization, which includes tricks like this and others in the past. Uh, someone who's really looking closely might start to notice, uh, like pop in on the details on things that are uh, farther away from you, or at least the middle distance. Um, but generally speaking, um, as long as it's not popping, as long as the popping doesn't happen like right in front of you, um, it's not too offensive to, to most people. I guess this is where I'm supposed to advertise that if you wanted a big old stupid 3D terrain editor for Game Maker, um, I made one. It's actually what I used to generate the examples in the, uh, in the How Many Triangles program. Hey. I'll have a link to it in the video description if you want to play around with it. So I suppose if you're the inquisitive type, the next logical question might be that a GTX 1060 is great and all. Uh, this is a picture of what she looks like. Isn't she pretty? But there are other graphics cards out there that are uh, more powerful than this. And what would happen if you tried to run something like this on, for example, a RTX 3090? And I do not have an RTX 3090 because I don't like spending money. But I, uh, I know some people who do. And because I'm every bit as curious about how this is going to perform as you are, 
I have asked one of my friends, uh, her name is Fern, you can find her over on Twitch at this URL, who has a 3090, uh, to run these demos uh, just to see what happens. So, I was kind of surprised by the results of this. I, I thought that there was a hard limit on triangles in Game Maker. So yeah, there's there's no shader or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'll show with the, with the shader on simple. But I, I was surprised to see that. It doesn't have a hard limit. And the limit I thought was there was about 2 million triangles from my own experiences and practices with Game Maker. But if I... I'll pull this up and show you the, the large model. I mean, this doesn't look promising, but it's because it's loading. <laughs> loud, loud, loud. Yeah. So, surprisingly, it's handling it pretty good. Um, I don't know how it's doing that. <laughs> I've never seen it go over, like, 3 million and maintain 60 FPS. I don't know if Game Maker made changes. Uh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea, but... It's pretty cool to see, and it makes me think that we can probably get away with a lot more in 3D in Game Maker. Yeah, here, I'll do the same one more time with them. <clears throat> the simple share, just to... Just to say we did. Definitely loads faster. Yeah, I mean, about the same performance, so... Okay, that was very interesting. Fern, thank you for your contributions to science. While Game Maker is clearly capable of rendering quite a lot in one frame if you do it right, I personally try to set a bit of a self-imposed limit of about, say, 100,000, 200,000 triangles per frame. That's partially for performance reasons on low-end devices such as the Raspberry Pi, and partially because I just don't make games that really have a need for more complex scenes than that. I make a lot of stuff that's low poly and a lot of stuff that's sprite art and anything that's too geometrically complex will just not visually make a lot of sense. Now obviously while there are still quite a few things that Game Maker can do, uh, it's worth remembering that there are still a number of things that it can't that other game engines can. At least at the present moment, things such as a lack of GPU instancing and a lack of index vertex buffers and a lack of vertex texture fetching and a lack of certain modern features in the fragment shader such as 3D textures and uh, cube maps. Those things do hold the engine back from reaching uh, the rendering potential of other game engines and other uh, 3D systems quite a bit. And some of those are allegedly going to be addressed in the mid to distant future uh, new runtime update to Game Maker. But for now, uh, we're stuck with this. And I personally think it's a lot of fun to see what you can do within these limitations instead of lamenting them. If I really was making a game that really needed uh, 3D textures or something like that, I probably would be using Unreal or Unity or something else. I hope that even if uh, you all who watch this to the end uh, maybe didn't learn anything new. I hope you were at least entertained. I've actually wanted to make this video for a while, but I didn't know if it would just end up being completely stupid or not. Anyway, if you want to mess around with this project yourself, I will not be putting it on GitHub because one and a half gigabytes of binary terrain files is not the sort of thing that usually makes Git very happy. But I'll probably set up an itch page for it or something like that. I wouldn't, again, recommend using it as just like a general benchmark because it doesn't really do a lot of different kinds of computing tasks and it's not very comprehensive, and it kind of only tests one thing. But if you want to treat it as such, then go ahead, I guess. I am going to end things off here. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial, and one whatever this is. So if you're interested in seeing any more of the weird things you can do in Game Maker, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found that entertaining. And uh, one last question. What happens if I run this on HTML5? I'm not going to run the, the huge one on HTML5, but what happens if I just like run the, um, the regular version on HTML5? All right, well, for all the other problems that HTML5 presents, it at least is able to render this at 60 frames per second. That's kind of fun. Okay, so since I said I would run a modified version of this project which does not try to store uh, six gigabytes of vertex information uh, instead of just uh, instead of just one, I have uh, changed the uh, the large terrain project so that it just draws the first vertex buffer 36 times instead of um, you know drawing each one once, and that's going to change a little bit. I had to modify the vertex count so that we just uh, multiply the number of uh, vertices in the first vertex buffer by 36 instead of trying to count it manually. Uh, so let's run this. 
once we do this, we can see that we are going to be drawing uh, 75 million triangles this time at about 14 frames per second, which um, definitely still not 60. It's definitely still not what Fern was getting, but we are on the three gigabyte 1060 able to get, uh, let's say a conservative estimate at about 10 times the frame rate that we were getting uh, before. And we're actually drawing about, uh, what, 17 million more triangles per frame. Uh, hey. Because the uh, the last the last cells in this grid only were about half half size for various reasons, and you know what? Just because I am I am more curious about this than I really should be, um, if I were to, I don't think the simple version of the terrain um, was demanding that we use that we use shared video memory because it was only a little under two gigabytes I think in total, but. And it would be super cool if I could get through that example without OBS crashing on me, but instead I guess I'll have to just explain how it went. By recycling the same the same chunk of the terrain over and over again and just drawing that a bunch of times, uh, we were actually able to get about um, 24, 25 FPS over 75 million triangles, which is actually a decent amount better than the 15 or 16 that we were getting on the, uh, the large terrain simple version earlier in the video. And I had thought that the simple version of the large terrain uh, was not going into shared... Um, shared video memory because it the whole thing I want to say was only like maybe two gigabytes in size and I didn't have that much other stuff open on my computer at the time but apparently it did so there you have it that's the consequence of running out of video memory this is obviously not a problem that most game maker games are going to have but well now you know I will see you all later Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Jonathan Bernardez, Kiexi, Cinder Larson, Square Crowd, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.